Hey everybody, so recently I released a new big video on the main channel, Conservative Comedy Destroyed My Life, and the reaction has been both, you know, overwhelming and overwhelmingly positive. Like, I honestly can't thank you enough. The video is more successful than anything I've ever made so far, and it seems like a lot of people think it's like, one of my best that they really like it. So I, I really appreciate it genuinely. Even so, the video is about conservatism and I talk about kind of a wide variety of media. So there's a lot of negative comments. Like there's a lot of people who are mad at the video, which, you know, I have to accept on some level is fine. It has to be okay. The reason why I bring that up is because today I want to talk about one comment that ruin my life. So for the most part, comments just kind of repeat themselves, right? And in the case of this video, there's about three or so comments that just come up over and over and over again. The first kind of mean comment is just insulting me, emphasizing my Jewishness, being a, a weird freak about the fact that I'm Jewish. That's the first kind of mean comment. The second kind of mean comment is about my inclusion of Doug Walker, the nostalgia critic. A lot of people on Twitter talk about my video as though I call Doug Walker like an intense conservative, which is very strange because I definitely don't do that and actually go out of my way multiple times to emphasize that I'm not doing that. Um, but people just take screenshots of videos and share them around, so I get that comment a fair amount. The third kind of comment that repeats over and over again is about how I misinterpreted uh, Team America World Police. This kind of comment disagreeing with the pro-rock war nature of Team America World Police kind of disappoints me, not just because I disagree with them, but because the whole section of the video was about how I kind of do agree with them, right? Like that whole part, I talk about how you know, even though this thing is true about the video, even though we can pull out this very clear pro rock war messaging, there's still a valid way to reread the movie as anti-war, and I think that's a reasonable thing to take from the movie. That's the point of the section. So seeing all these people saying, no, actually, I interpret the movie as against the war, it's like, okay, well, you know, that fine, that's fine, that's fine by me. I, I, that, I said that, I got there, right? But none of these three comments, as special as they are, is what I wanna talk about today. Uh, and let me just read to you now the comment that uh, destroyed my life. The reason why you don't get J.P. Sears' comedy is because he's making jabs at how the liberal side sees what the conservatives are like. He takes the liberal ideal, or worse ideas, of really, of what a conservative is, and takes it to the absurd. A true conservative, or even a moderate conservative, understands it's making fun of the other side's boogeyman caricature of the conservatives. So what this comment is basically saying is, no, J.P. Sears isn't just an intense conservative, Actually, he's making fun of the liberal idea of what a conservative is. He's parodying the liberal imagination of conservatism. So I love this comment and I hate this comment because it is at once like very ingenious and also just completely incomprehensible. This person is doing these insane somersaults, cartwheels of interpretation. J.P. Sears is a parody of the liberal imagination. You don't get it. He doesn't actually mean all the crazy things he says. He's a parody of what liberals think conservatives think. And actually, this guy says, every conservative is getting that. Every conservative is receiving this message. But of course, you know, the problem here is that it makes no sense and that it's not true. For one thing, J.P. Sears dressing up as a caricature of a trans woman and making jokes about, you know, trans ideology and how stupid it is, on no level does that caricature the liberal imagination of conservatives. That is, it, it's, it doesn't come off that way at all. There's no place in the text where this person is getting that. But also, and arguably more importantly, nobody in J.P. Sears' audience feels this way. When you look at the comments, they overwhelmingly simply agree with him about the ways in which he's a conservative. You know, this comment really gets to me because as a video essayist, I generally act as if there's a way of interpreting media properly. In fact, I basically do think there's correct and incorrect ways of interpreting media and try to interpret it correctly. I mean, that's that should be my job, right? But when you look at a comment like this, it starts to feel like there is no light at the end of the tunnel, that there is no insight you can get, that there is no truth in this world. There will always be another twist, another contortion, another strange interpretive leap that allows an audience to comfort itself, that allows them to conjure a defensive reading of some text that they like. And there's something horrifying about that, about that feeling that there is no truth, that people will just contort reality any way they like, 
But at the same time, it's it's kind of fun. Like this person is doing this imaginative, crazy, irrational reading, and they're presenting it as though it just makes sense because that's the story that they have to tell themselves to watch J.P. Sears, I guess. People will do anything for the media that makes them feel comfortable. And in a way, this is kind of true across the board, right? You know, most of the comments I received disagreeing with me about Team America, they didn't even attend to the things I said about it. They didn't attend uh, to the fact that Matt Stone and Trey Parker themselves said that that speech was not satire, that they were as people tepidly in support of the Iraq war, that in fact the entire structure of Team America Police builds to that speech, that it doesn't just come out of nowhere. And the truth is, none of that matters. When we interface with and interpret a text, we generally just invent vent the audience that makes the most sense to us and leave it at that. And that's kind of it. And we'll do whatever we have to do to make that interpretation work. Anyway, this was a bit of a rant. I don't know if this was, I don't know if this was good.